The Aral Sea is a shadow of its former self. Those in the Kazakh city of Aralsk once had the sea at their doorstep, but are now confronted by the haunting sight of abandoned ships. The water is 20 kilometers away, and from the dried up remains, sickness comes. One local woman who chose not to be named remembers when friends and family started to fall ill. What is this sick you? New diseases emerged that we had never seen in high numbers, especially related to breathing. My husband's got chronic bronchitis. That's how we live. You can't see salt in the air, but you feel it on the skin, and you can feel it on the tongue. Fields planted to make the Soviet Union completely self-sufficient in cotton consumed the rivers feeding into the Aral Sea. Decade by decade, it nearly disappeared. Now, what was once the world's fourth largest landlocked body of water is reduced to a pit of sand, salt, and pollution. The salt clings to the moist seabed, like here at the harbor in Aralsk. As soon as it's dry enough, even the slightest wind carries it into the town and across the country, into the lungs of men, women, and children who don't even know they're breathing it. Before the Grand Cotton Scheme, the Aral Sea was one of the most picturesque places in Central Asia. As it disappeared along with the Soviet Union, the task of regeneration fell to the heads of newly independent Central Asian states in the early 1990s. It was then that people learned the extent of the sea's demise, that until that point was known only to those close to the cultivation projects. Pesticides used to yield cotton leached into the rivers, making the water a silent killer. The ground is heavily polluted as well. In essence, we're living in a disaster area. In the past, our infectious disease ward had 150 to 160 patients, especially children with intestinal diseases per year. Now it's about five per year. It was the exact same with viral hepatitis. This is all thanks to clean water. Three years ago, a group called the International Fund for Saving the Aral Sea stepped in to protect the people from the tainted water. Now the freshwater project solves many issues. When possible, they lead tap water pipes to the villages, and for distant villages, they create local water pipe systems. But the pesticides aren't just in the fresh water. They're blowing across the dusty seabed as well. In addition, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis is on the rise, exacerbated by this toxic combination. Special rehabilitation wards are reserved in area hospitals. Our government pays 50% for what it calls ecological extras to our salaries. They throw an extra for living near Bakanoa, where the rockets are launched, and the RLC. We have serious problems with the draft. Young people come in unfit for service. Small dams now trap what little water flows into the upper Aral Sea, irrigating the desert little by little. But walking through this place that's been given a new lease on life, one can see the legacy of mismanagement. It begs the question, is bringing the water back enough to overcome the years of neglect? Or is the pollution too great to turn the Dust Bowl back into a thriving basin? Lindsay France, RT, Kazakhstan.